Hi everyone! Thanks so much for coming along to attend Environmental Storytime. My name's Claire Culliford and I'm an author. I've written a series of children's books to help you all learn about the different environmental issues we're facing in the world right now. In my stories, the little animal characters come up with fun, creative ways to resolve these issues. In the future, when you grow up and become adults, we're going to need you to do just the same thing. Paula the parrot and I would love to share our story about air pollution and ecotourism with you. So, I'm going to read the story and Paula is going to keep me company. Afterwards, I'll share some fun, language and creative activities with you. You can do these with an adult, your brothers or sisters, or any other children that are around. You can download all of these activities from the resources page of my website. So, let's get started. Paula is a parrot. She's a squawky, talky parrot. She loves the sound of her own voice. As she's young, she's only just discovering the different noises she can make. Paula is an adventurous parrot. She loves flying through the trees in the forest from branch to branch. Her mother always tells her to be careful and not to go too far. Paula and her friends like to fly around and make lots of noise when visitors come to see them in the forest. The visitors take photos of them with their cameras. Click, click, click. It's almost like the parrots are film stars. Unfortunately, some days Paula has a cough. Her best friend Priya often has a cough at the same time. On these days, their mothers don't let them go out to play. So they stay at home and rest their voices. Paula and Priya don't understand why they keep coughing. It seems to happen when there are lots of visitors in the forest. One day, Paula is at home. Her mother has given her some berries to help her throat and told her to rest her voice and her wings. Paula still likes to look down from her home and watch all the visitors arriving in the forest. Mum, my throat hurts again, says Paula in between coughs. <coughs> I know, dear. But if you rest your voice today, then tomorrow you'll feel much better, says her mum. She gives Paula's back a gentle stroke with her wing. But why does the cough keep coming back? asks Paula, a little scared. Is it something serious? Oh no, says her mum. The cough you have is because of the cars that come to the forest. Some of them have bad engines that produce fumes, which make the air dirty. That causes air pollution. The fumes get stuck in your throat if you get too near to them. You young parrots like to fly around close to the visitors, so the fumes get into your beak. Do all cars make me cough? 
Paula asks. There are some cars with good engines, Paula's mum explains. Those cars don't make fumes at all. They're better for your throat and for the air too. They're even better for the trees in the forest. Paula thinks this is really interesting. And when she's better, she rushes to tell Priya. What do you think we should do? asks Priya. I like flying around the visitors, but I don't want to keep getting a cough. Paula, who is an adventurous parrot, can't bear the thought of not being able to fly around. So she starts to think. And then she has an idea. Perhaps we could just fly around the visitors that come on a bicycle or on foot, she suggests. That's a really good idea, says Priya. Maybe we could fly around the visitors that come in cars with good engines too. We'll just avoid the visitors who come in the cars with bad engines that make fumes. Perfect, squawks Paula. And so, once they are better, Paula and Priya put on a display for the visitors again, flying up, down, all around and squawking at the top of their voices. However, they make sure to avoid visitors who come in the cars that make bad fumes. This probably leaves some visitors very confused. They have been told you can always see parrots in this forest. Yet some visitors don't see any parrots at all. As the visitors realise over time what is happening, more and more of them arrive in cars with good engines, or on bicycles, or even on foot. Paula and Priya notice that their coughs have stopped, so they can fly around the visitors again. Everyone is happier. The visitors get to see the parrots. Click, click, click. And Paula and Priya have helped make the air in their forest much cleaner. Some questions for you to think about. Does air pollution make the air dirty or clean? What kind of cars have good engines? Can you find out what the car fumes from bad car engines are made of? Paula and I hope you really enjoyed the story. We're now going to show you some activities that you can do to help you think about the story, its characters, air pollution and ecotourism. For some of the activities, you'll need to try and remember what happened in the story. First of all, there are two pictures for you to colour in. These come from the book and you can decide what colours you want to use. Paula is a hyacinth blue macaw parrot. They're usually found in Central and Eastern South America. They live in rainforests like the Amazon rainforest. From their head to the tip of their tail, they're about one meter long. That's longer than any other species of parrot. There are also two sets of words for songs. We call these lyrics. One has single words in it. Can you make up a little tune to sing the song to? For example, 
Parrot, parrot, parrot car, parrot car, parrot car, parrot, parrot, parrot car, parrot forest car. What about the song with complete sentences? Perhaps you could try something like this. Air pollution in the forest, air pollution in the forest. Let's prevent it near and far. Air pollution in the forest, air pollution in the forest. Let's use electric cars. The next activity is a word matching exercise. Can you use the little bit of text from the story to help you match the words to the things in the picture? Try out the gap fill exercise. Can you put the right words in the gaps in the text so that you recreate part of the story? Remember to check you know the meanings of the words too. Use a dictionary if it helps. There's also a true and false exercise to see what you remember about the story. Can you work out which sentences are true and which are false? And finally, there's a drawing activity and a writing activity. If you've read the book, can you remember some of the pictures from it? If not, you might want to use the picture behind me. Can you draw that or your favourite picture from the book? And can you remember what happened in the story? Can you write about your favourite part of the story and why you like it? That's all from Paula and me for now. If you enjoyed reading, Paula helps prevent air pollution with us. Try one of the other stories in the Little Helpers series. You can find them in bookshops like Waterstones and your local bookstore, on Amazon or on my website www.clairecullerford.com Take lots of care. Bye for now.